As UAVs have become increasingly commercially available, militant groups have used them in their theatres of conflict in a variety of contexts. Mostly they've been used for reconnaissance and propaganda purposes, but increasingly they're being used to conduct attacks on the militant's adversaries on the ground. The Islamic State has been one of the most widespread users of these systems, particularly in Iraq and Syria. Uh, JTIC have recorded 34 attacks using these UAVs from open sources uh, since records began in 2009. These have mostly been used uh, from 2016 onwards, although the number that we've recorded is probably much higher than we could attribute from open sources. And the group definitely uh, claims a lot more attacks than they commit. This is prominently featured in the video released by the group in January called Knights of the Departments that showed numerous attacks involving this tactic targeting security forces on the ground. The group also showed other fixed wing systems such as Skywalker X7 and X8 carrying IEDs being flown, although it's likely that these fixed wing systems are much more inaccurate a weapon system than the quadcopters. Most of the munitions used by the Islamic State appear to be improvised, either by repurposing conventional munitions, such as mortar rounds or 40mm grenades, or by creating large numbers of homemade devices, often involving injection moulded casings, with improvised explosives attached to them. The Combating Terrorism Centre reported in January that the group's institutionalised programme for weaponising UAVs had been ongoing since 2015. As well as using UAVs to drop munitions on security forces on the ground, the group have also used so-called Trojan horse devices, where a device is embedded within the UAV itself, to target security forces when the UAV has been brought down. In one notable example of this tactic, in October 2016, two Peshmerga forces were killed and two French security forces personnel were wounded when an IED in place within the battery pack of a quadcopter that had been downed by security forces detonated upon inspection. The use of weaponised commercial UAVs has garnered a lot of publicity through propaganda releases. However, in the battlefield context, they have little effect in terms of inflicting losses on security forces on the ground. This is typically because of the small payloads offered by the commercial systems of between 1 and 2 kilos, coupled with a limited operation time. The explosives in this quantity of the potential maximum payloads do have the potential to cause significant damage. However, we must take into account the additional payloads, including cameras and other sensors, lowering the potential explosive payload further. In Iraq and Syria in particular, the Islamic State has much more effective weapon systems at its disposal. As well as mortars, artillery and other standoff weapon systems, its most potent weapon, its suicide car bombs, can inflict much more significant damage on its targets in these battlefield contexts. The Islamic State has shown that commercially available UAVs can be adapted to be used to conduct attacks, presenting serious security implications in the West, particularly where they are readily available, in some cases inexpensive. The use of this tactic would have a significant symbolic impact with implications for legislation on UAVs themselves, as well as wider security impacts. The aviation sector in particular represents a significant potential target with the implications of a successful or attempted attack involving UAV being substantial for the industry. We've seen several near misses in recent years between UAVs and civilian airliners over the skies of the UK in particular. The deliberate targeting of airliners involving UAVs is a potential method of attack for militants and a successful attack would likely result in potential mass casualties as well as significant economic damage. We've identified several other potential target sets that militants may use UAVs to attack. These include national infrastructure targets, including power stations and transport hubs, and also prominent landmarks and individuals, and other hard targets such as military bases and large crowds. As well as the limitations we've seen in Syria and Iraq with the Islamic State use of UAVs, some of these limitations apply to potential use in the West as well. We've identified the limitation in terms of payloads and explosives, but also the Islamic State has been able to conduct significant research and development in its areas under its control to develop this capability. And this is something actors in the West will not have. There is likely, however, to have been significant knowledge transfer on the use of UAVs from the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq to its wider networks outside of these areas. And would-be users of this tactic still have significant obstacles to overcome. Although the Islamic State has likely provided details on manufacturing explosives, 
To do so without detection by security forces in conjunction with UAVs would be extremely difficult. So overall, although we think that the use of UAVs would be an attractive option for militant actors seeking to conduct attacks in, in the West, uh, we think that there are much more viable options for, for these kind of actors to uh, enable to conduct high profile and high casualty attacks. Um, we've seen recently the use of knives and vehicles having a severe impact um, as well as causing a large number of casualties. Um, and this is something that the use of a drone uh, would not potentially not give the uh, user in search and attack.